Hello. Hello. Yeah, just imagine that I have been listening to uh, Hakim uh, Karim for the last 35 years, and uh, you know we are talking about complexity. And uh, being the last speaker, I'm not going to. Uh, 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 I'm going to. I, I believe you all have heard all the specifics. So I'm going to do away with all the specifics, but uh, talk about something about exception. Um, now, exception is uh, actually a neutral word that uh, actually we can, uh, we, we actually classify things like growth, innovation, dis discovery, disruptive uh, 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 collaboration, and uh, uh, unexpected uh, events, invisible hand, and uh, unplanned, unscheduled uh, barriers. Uh, and working outside the box, opportunities, risk, and so on. And even the word so on is actually an ex exception. Now, it is already seven years since authorities suspected that LIBO, the benchmark interest rate used for some 300 trillion worth of financial product today was rigged. It is now more than 23 years since senior George Bush launched the Iraqi attack and the story is still unfolding. And it is equally long since the collapse of LTCM, yet in 2008, we are repeating the same fundamental mistakes that we have committed during the time of LTCM. Today, whether it is in the frontier of science or mathematics, or the day-to-day -day problems of humanity, social sciences, economy of all politics, we are experiencing certain new phenomena that we had never faced before. Other than those words that I just mentioned, we are now talking about borderless war, global warming, negative interest rate, money printing, low inflation, high and unemployment, turbulent economic cycles, shadow banking, cloud lending, cloud computing, stem cell stands stem cell remedy, multi-universes, theory of nonsense, and so on. We actually can lengthen this list of mystery, and it is definitely not comforting that we cannot sum all this new phenomena under some umbrella of disciplines that our universities teach. In other words, even our institution of high learning are now challenged by this new world of exceptions. Let me deviate to how I started Civil League. Now, this is not because I want to sell you shares, but because it has a lot to do with exception. Uh, it was back in the time that I was in IBM, and they made me in charge of banking and finance. And I was noticing certain unique phenomena that I did not experience during the time that I was in charge of manufacturing and distribution. When I discovered, what I discovered was that banking and finance are very sensitive to something known as the exceptions. A small exception in banking and finance can result in tens of thousands of customer complaints. Since they were not short of exceptions, and I was the person in charge, 
I kept receiving calls from customers who demand solutions for such exceptions. I decided to consult all the software vendors in this world as to how to approach, how to address this issue of exception. Luckily, 1987, 1988, IBM was still powerful, and then everyone was willing to cooperate. One by one, I talked to the software houses and explain the issues that I face day to day. And I was very hopeful that somebody will give me a solution. Unfortunately, after traveling around the world in about two years, I received no relevant answer and I have to report my findings to my ex-boss, Kbilo. And when I give him the conclusion, he turned around and say, so do you have an answer? Now I thought I have spent a few hundred thousands uh, ringgit traveling around the world. It is tough for me to say, sorry, I have, I have no answer. So I conveniently told him that, yes, there was an answer, and the answer is group theory. Now, I thought it would be the end of the conversation, but unfortunately, KB insisted that I take on the challenge and develop this so-called theoretic, group theoretic solution. As you know, theory is very far away from reality. And I was trying very hard to persuade KB from not entering into an endeavor that is actually nearly impossible. But uh, KB is a very difficult boss and is a person who never give up. And so I have no choice. But uh, to agree to take it up, but uh, doing it outside of IBM. Now, it is nearly impossible to do a theoretical venture within the structure and the reporting uh, system within IBM. When I started, I tried to recruit investors like Halim Saad, Logica, EPF, Kazana, and so on. And at the beginning few, more, few years, actually I tried to list the Inquiry Stock Exchange. However, it was difficult to explain to other people. What a world that to other people, a world that is without form, without shape, without schedule, without measure, without quality, without quantity. Because those were the properties of norms, not the properties of exceptions. So we remained private, and I held the company 100% until we finally get listed in SGX 2003, uh, the company today is worth about 3 billion Singapore dollar and is operating in more than 30 countries around the world. In 1996, I foresaw an even bigger challenge, a new challenge caused by the existence of something known as internet. Even after six years training my people to handle exceptions, it is still difficult to get them to get used to dealing with unknowns, invisible obstacles, and unbranded exceptions. 
Obviously, without mathematical models, it is impossible to deal with something so unspecific. This time, I declared the solution category theory. Versus the first innovation, which was group theory. Group theory and category theory are actually brothers and sisters. So if you understand one and if you really draw deep into that space, you can understand the other. But unfortunately, category theory was so new that even among the mathematicians, they call it theory of nonsense. Now, that is because that category theory is, was meant to handle mathematical exceptions. And being mathematical exceptions, we, anyone with common sense should see no sense in those exceptions. So it is actually fair to call it nonsense. Well, to fast forward, uh, we spent 18 years on that now. And about three years ago, I think we make it and we try on a few small installations and to make sure that our people are able to respond to bigger uh, installation. And today, we are installing one installation that it is about the size of nearly 100, 100 Hong Leong Bank. And obviously, that is an environment of nearly infinite exceptions. But exceptions are not problems. They are actually opportunities. All innovations, all inventions, discovery, new multi-billion enterprises are or were exceptions. As the world moves into complexity, we are now being presented with all sorts of risks, disruptions, and even destructions. But evolution is always about overcoming the unknowns, the unexpected, the obstacles, the exceptions, and then survive. Exceptions still present itself in Murphy's Law in that what will happen will happen. So we are in the crossroad of either tremendous opportunity or tremendous risk. For example, if I am going to be lucky again, then I'll plan the listing in Hong Kong of news, this new product called SCCIM may end up one of the greatest hit in Asia or even the world. In, conduct, in conducting the above researches, I realized that the world had moved into a new phase that is characterized by exceptions and invisible forces. In other words, we are moving into a more and more abstracted world. Not only we are being presented with big risks, but so also big opportunities. And also a big problem of inventing new words to uh, reflect this new reality. That explains why I go in a big circle explaining the relevance of unknowns, exceptions, invisible, unscheduled, and so on in this ASEAN Forum. For ASEAN, it is already 47 years of norm. It has grown from about 10% of Japan GDP to more than 60% of Japan GDP. I hope that we are now willing to spend more time on exceptions. Diversities are exceptions. But they are not necessarily bad. Barriers are the norm, but they are not necessarily good. 
The norm of ASEAN is the government, and the exception of ASEAN is the businesses and the social institutions. From the talks of previous speakers, I believe most of, most of us agreed on the importance of private institutions and private initiatives, the exceptions. It is with this belief that Civil League was more than willing to contribute a small little effort in this ABC forum. For many years, economists had struggled to identify their work as either cooperative or non-cooperative. The exception to these two models is collaborative. For ASEAN, it is obvious that it should be collaborative collaboration between government and private sectors, government and governments, governments and governments, private sectors with private sectors, trade associations with trade associations, or put in some one simple term, the combinatorics of institutional and individual collaboration. In fact, many of the specific of this concept were well covered in the earlier sessions. In closing, I would say that we are moving from, an, from the norms into the exceptions, from the visible to the invisible, from the expected into the unexpected, from the scheduled into the unscheduled, and from government institutions into private institutions and individuals. In the past, mastering, mastering the norm is nearly an assurance to a certain degree of success going forward. It is more and more that exceptions, invisible hand, and the unexpected that is going to dictate the circumstances. Our problems now is very similar to what I faced in 1988. That is, how to deal with all these exceptions, challenges, and unexpected happenings. Undoubtedly, undoubted, <laughs> sorry, unfortunately, the conventional wisdom was taught in our institution of higher learning remain unchanged or stayed with the norm. I remembered reading an article in Financial Times in May about one student asking Oxford professors how the economy they taught could explain, could explain the crisis of 2008. Unfortunately, none come up with an explanation that was even close to the real situation. For me, it is discomforting to see that most governments, inclusive of USA, continue to write on the momentum of the norms, refusing to acknowledge the validity and the importance of exceptions. I'm also saddened by the fact that our kids are being taught by professors who prefer to repeat what they, their professors taught them, preferring the piece of outdated theories and refusing the challenge of new phenomena that could not be explained by all conventional methods. But I'm very encouraged by the effort of ABC today. I hope one good exception leads to another good exception. I hope that during the time of Malaysian chairmanship of ASEAN, instead of conducting the norms, more efforts are injected into sustainable exceptions, especially recruiting the participation of private institutions and individuals. This is, this is the 25th year of Silver League. I decided to have an office in each of ASEAN countries very early, so many of them are now celebrating more than 20 years of existence. I agreed that Asia is full of diversities, and I believe diversities teach us the value of exceptions. And it is the exceptions that lead to innovation inventions, discoveries, new models, and new solutions. 
I hope we will continue to garner, garner the positive power of exceptions in collaboration with the norm of ASEAN. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also to Mr. Goping, already chairman of Silver.